Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'm going to go freehand and show you all of my models um, that relate to the lymphatic system. Uh, let me grab this model and put it over here where it belongs. And by the way, I'm going off of my particular objectives list. The first thing on the list is the thymus. If we look at this model, let me grab a pointer. Um, this is a model that represents the lymphat sorry, represents the endocrine system. Um, and it has a thymus because the thymus is part of the endocrine system and also part of the lymphatic system. In terms of the lymphatic system, by the way, the critical importance of the thymus is that it um, makes sure that T lymphocytes develop correctly and do not end up attacking self. Um, so that's thymus on this model. On this heart model, we have a thymus. So as you can see on the other model, the thymus is right at the top of the heart. And this heart model, therefore, has a nice thymus right here. Um, I like this one because you can pop it off and look at the vasculature on the back, at least for this one, and get an idea of its kind of shape. Nifty fact about the thymus, it's really large in children, and it shrinks as we get older. Um, in children, it's because your lymphatic system, your immune system is developing. Um, so you need lots more T lymphocytes. All right, anyway, moving on to the next one. The next one is the spleen. No spleen on that model. Here on my torso models, though, we have spleens. Here's a spleen. Notice that the spleen is in the upper left of the abdominal cavity, and it's to the rear of the abdominal cavity. It's to the back. And on most torso models, it has this kind of deep um, purple, reddish color to it. Lots of blood runs through the spleen, and that's why. The other thing to notice, um, the pancreas here leads up to the spleen. So that's another landmark to help you see it. And I guess third thing, um, the spleen is always just above the left kidney. Let's look at this other torso model. This is actually a more realistic spleen in terms of its shape inside of the body. So that's a spleen, and again, it's at the top of the left kidney. And I told you the pancreas comes right, right up to it. Um, this is the stomach from this torso model. It's got the spleen attached to the stomach, and the stomach would be about here. So you can see that that pancreas, again, would come right up to where the spleen is. Last torso model. Here's the spleen on this torso model. Slightly lighter color than the other ones. But again, there's the top of that left kidney, by the way. If I take that out, you can really see it. There's the kidney and there's the spleen. So the spleen is above the left kidney, and there's the pancreas again leading right up to the spleen. And I think that's it for spleen. Um, lymph nodes is the next thing. So let's look at this model. Down here in the upper left thigh, there's a lymph node, there's a lymph node, there's a lymph node, there's a lymph node. Um, and lymphatic vessels are the next. There's lymphatic vessels. Um, up here under this torso model's arm, we have lymph node, lymph node, lymph node, and so on. So here's all those lymph nodes. And then again, those light pink lines coming away, those are lymphatic vessels, little lymphatic vessels. Um, on this next torso model, under its right arm, I see two lymph nodes represented as those little pink circles. So that's a lymph node, and that's a lymph node. And then down on its right upper thigh, we've got a little pink circle there. And each one of these pink circles on this model, again, represents a lymph node. No lymphatic vessels on this model. Last torso model over here, they represent these in green. Lymph node, lymph node, lymph node, lymph node, lymph node. And in white here, lymphatic vessels. And I think they have little segments for these lymphatic vessels in this particular model, by the way, because those lymphatic vessels have valves. My best guess is they're trying to indicate that there are valves here. So that's lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. Um, the regional lymph nodes. Let me go through each one that we can see on each one of these models. For this model, and the way I would ask for this in my lab, I would circle all of these lymph nodes with colored tape. 
And I would ask my students, what are these structures circled by the tape? That lets you know that I'm trying to get to not just that this is a lymph node, but that these are the left inguinal lymph nodes in this case. Left inguinal lymph nodes. And then, again, on this torso model, if we go up here under the arm, this is the left, this would be the left arm. Therefore, this would be the left axillary region. And if I circled these lymph nodes in colored tape, then I'm looking for left axillary lymph nodes. And I think that's it on this model because I don't see any obvious, oh, well, maybe that's supposed to be a cervical lymph node there, so that might be right cervical lymph node, um, but I don't like that one too much. If I go to this torso model, we've got a few that we can point to. These that we looked at earlier, again, if I circled in tape, this would be right inguinal lymph nodes. If I pointed under here, under the torso models, in this case, right arm, this would be right axillary lymph nodes. And then this one, I forgot to point these out earlier, but these little pink guys on the torso model's neck are lymph nodes. So these would be right cervical lymph nodes. Let's go to this last torso model. Left inguinal lymph nodes. Again, if I circled it in tape, left inguinal lymph nodes. And this one doesn't have any lymph nodes in the neck that I've noticed, and both of its arms are down, so we can't see the, um, the axillary lymph nodes. So I think that's it for regional lymph nodes. Next on the list, we did the regional lymph nodes. Tonsils. I like to use this model the most for this, and here's what this model is. It's basically a face or part of a head, and it has a nice sagittal section and that creates a right side of the head or face and the left side of the head or face. So let's look in here behind the tongue and we can see um, the tonsils. Right at the base of the tongue is the lingual tonsil. Because this is the right side of the head, that makes this the right palatine tonsil. The palatine tonsils are the ones, if you ever look in your throat when you get a sore throat and if you see these big red, irritated, bulgy things on the side of your throat. Those are the palatine tonsils. The lingual tonsil is a bit harder to see. You'd have to depress your tongue a little bit, and some people can't do that without gagging. They're more difficult to see. All right, the last one is up here. That's pharyngeal tonsil, also known as adenoids. Let's go to the other, the left side of the face. And again, we've got lingual tonsil here at the base of the tongue. We've got left palatine tonsil here. And then again, we've got pharyngeal tonsil up here. This is the other model that I use for tonsils. Comes from that older torso model right there. This is the right side of the head. So that would make this the right palatine tonsil. This darkly colored thing here, I think they just made it dark to make it easy to see, that's the lingual tonsil. And then this one, they didn't really include it, but there should be a pharyngeal tonsil here. Um, as I was looking at these models earlier, by the way, if we look at this newer torso model here, I believe whoever made the model, see if I can get the lighting right, if we look at the back of the nasal cavity, there's a little bit of roughness back here. I think that's adenoids. I think that's pharyngeal tonsils on this particular model. Sorry for the lighting. That does not look good, does it? What if I lean it back? Sorry for the squeak. There we go. Now we got some light. Back here again, behind the nasal cavity, and this roughness that you see there, that I believe is supposed to be pharyngeal tonsil in this model. And I've looked at this one. I don't see lingual specifically, and I don't see palatine anywhere. At least not that I can make out easily. Okay. So those are tonsils. What's next on our list here? Appendix. And then we've got right lymphatic duct and left lymphatic duct. The appendix. I've taken out the intestines from this model, from this torso model. This is small intestine, the gray one is large intestine. At the beginning of the large intestine is where we find this little guy hanging off. 
That is the appendix. So on this model, that's how the appendix is represented. And by the way, this one's not very, very realistic. If I go over to this older torso model, here's the large intestine pulled out. And here's the beginning of that large intestine. It's called the cecum. And if I look, oh, there it is, sorry. Right here, that's appendix. Again, on the bottom, the bottom, the beginning of the large intestine, that's appendix. Let's look at this newest torso model. Here's large intestine. Again, this is the beginning, the cecum portion of the large intestine. And where would I find appendix? Right there. So let me get my pointer on it. There. That's appendix. The other term for appendix is vermiform appendix, because it kind of looks like a little worm, doesn't it? So again, that's appendix, and I think that's all the places I can see it on these models. Oh, um, the last two in my objectives from the models are um, the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct. So if we look in here, this is a neck. There's the person's chin. Here's their Adam's apple. There's the beginning of their trachea going down their neck. There's a thyroid gland and so on. Um, here is the left subclavian vein and the right subclavian vein. And the little green vessels that you see here, those little green vessels are lymphatic vessels. They've just colored them green to make it easier to see. This one, because it's on the right side and leading into the subclavian vein on the right, this would be the right thoracic duct leading into the right subclavian vein. And then over here, this leads into the left subclavian vein, so that is the thoracic duct. So on the right, we have the right thorac sorry, we have the right lymphatic duct. On the left, we have the thoracic duct. And they drain into those veins. Oh, lastly, we can see the same kind of blood vessels here, by the way, but this torso model doesn't, it's not representing any lymphatics. Same for this one, I've looked at it. But this one here, here's that left subclavian vein. And here we have this kind of flesh-colored thing coming in. That must be the thoracic duct. So that's another place where I could ask for thoracic duct. And I believe that's it, at least for my models. That's all of the lymphatic structures that I have in my lab. Um, so... As always, if you have any comments or questions or anything, please leave them down below. And thank you once again for watching.